This is the best stuffed shells. Stuffed with a beautiful ricotta mixture, a quick homemade sauce underneath. It comes together pretty quickly. It's super delicious, full of flavor, great for a weeknight meal. Let's make some. These are super simple stuffed shells. And what I love about them is the ricotta mixture that goes into the shell has that creamy ricotta brightness that you want. And then a really quick tomato sauce that we're gonna throw together, make. It's a great kind of casserole, cozy dish, but can be a weeknight meal, weekend meal. And it's one of those that once you make it, you're gonna realize, why don't we make these stuffed shells more often? You see them, they look beautiful, you think they're a lot of work, and guess what? It's not, and you're about to find out. So what I have is over here some butter that I have going on the stove. I like to make my tomato sauce some butter. I think it rounds out the flavor a little bit better, calms the acidity of tomatoes, adds a little bit of richness. So I'm gonna take some onion and I just wanna mince it up. Now onion is gonna obviously kind of just melt into the sauce, but it really is that base flavor we need. And if you're noticing here, what I'm doing is I am just trying to mince it somewhat evenly. You could also grate your onion, but to me that kind of brings out a little too much juice sometimes. So what I like to do is mince it somewhat finely and then let it cook in the butter. Butter kind of seems weird to some people, but instead of oil, butter actually adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit more of this interest that I really like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our onion and we're gonna take it right over to this hot butter, put it in, oh, there it is. And we're gonna let it just cook right in that butter mixture until it's starting just to color. At the same time, I always like to add a little bit of salt. For one, what that does, it actually brings out more of the moisture in the onions, but it also makes sure we're seasoning every layer, which to me is super important. So we're gonna let this cook a little bit, and we'll move on. So I've been chopping garlic. My onions are just about done. So I have the garlic here. Now, you know when we used to always be told that little green stem in the middle of the garlic needed to come out? It doesn't. It tastes just like garlic. It's fine. So what I have here is my onion. You can see it's getting some nice golden hues to it. That's what you want. You want it to get softened and a little bit golden. So now I'm gonna add my garlic. And you always add it a little bit after because you don't want it to burn the garlic. And now I'm gonna add some black pepper, a little bit of red pepper flakes. You know, you can up them if you want more heat and some oregano. We wanna just lightly flavor this. Nothing too strong. This is a simple sauce because ricotta is a very light flavor. And since the shells are gonna be stuffed with ricotta, we don't want them to be overpowered with anything. So once that's stirred in, I'm just gonna add a nice big hefty sprig of basil. I don't like fresh basil chopped up in a sauce. It gets kind of black and not that great. So I'm gonna pull this out after it emits all of its flavor. So I'm just gonna throw it in and I'm just gonna put in my crushed tomatoes. I like to use crushed tomatoes because they have a little bit of texture, but not whole pieces of tomato. It's just like the perfect texture to me for a sauce. And these canned staples, you know, I home cook and I home can a lot of my tomato products, but I write these recipes for just being able to purchase them in the store. So we're gonna let this come to a simmer and it's just gonna kind of soak in all those flavors, really kind of marry all that flavor, which is what I want. Right here I have, of course, boiling water and this is just to cook our shells. The important thing anytime you cook pasta, salt the water very well. Why? This is the one chance you get to season the pasta and you don't wanna add your salt to a pan until after the water's boiling. So add your salt. Now we have our shells. We're gonna put them right in. We're gonna let them cook while the sauce is simmering and we'll move on. So I just drained my pasta. The sauce is still simmering and I did do the almighty sin. I did rinse the pasta with cool water just to stop the cooking and to cool it off so I can touch it here in a little bit when we're gonna fill them. But you can see they plump up they become malleable, so you can, you know, pick them up, fill them. They're beautiful. I, it's kind of a fun process. It's one of those things you don't do all the time, but when you do it, it's like, well, this is good and this is fun. So what we're gonna do now is the mixture we're gonna put into the shells, which is a ricotta mixture. Ricotta is a delicious cheese that I feel like, if you grew up in the Midwest, like I did, you maybe didn't give ricotta enough credit because you're like, well, I'm used to cottage cheese. <laughs> what is ricotta? But ricotta is delicious. It, even though it has, it looks grainy at first, it has a creaminess and a really beautiful, rich flavor. I think the important part here is don't be tempted to buy the non-fat, low-fat ricotta. That has no flavor. This has a lot of flavor. Enjoy the flavor. It's needed here. So what we're gonna start is by putting an egg right in here. And the reason we're doing an egg is just like in anything, it binds it. It brings it together. So I wanna whisk that egg just because then it will mix into everything else even easier. And I think that's the important part here is if you kind of just pre-whisk your egg, see how it's 
just forming that white and yolk together. That's gonna make it so it mixes in with everything else super easily. Now, I didn't grab my spatula, but now what we're gonna do is put in our ricotta. So look at that beautiful ricotta. We have it right in here. Ricotta is great to use in so many things. Pasta, pizza. In this case, we're stuffing it into pasta, which is even, it's just delicious and more fun. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. Again, super important to season each layer. You know, ricotta has almost a sweetness to it, so you really wanna offset that with some salt and some pepper. I'm gonna put in a little bit of lemon zest. This is a surprising one. But what lemon zest does, notice I'm just taking those yellow parts. I turn my microplane grater upside down so it catches all the zest and I can hold with my left hand or my not dominant hand, the piece of fruit. And with my right hand, I can just go through and nice lightly grate that just beautiful bright yellow part. This just adds a brightness. So it kind of wakes up all the flavors and it works really well with ricotta. That can be more rich. This brightness just adds this beautiful pop in that ricotta and really makes the flavors come out of the herbs we're gonna add too. So we have both basil that I chopped up and I do like fresh in this case because we're putting it into like a beautiful cheese and I want it fresh and some parsley. So I'm putting both of those in and I want them to have that full flavor effect which I think is super important. And then I have some mozzarella cheese. Not a question, you need to put that in there. And that's gonna have that creaminess and I shred my own. I think that's super important and a little bit of Parmesan. So we're gonna put those in there and we just need to fold all this together. So now we just wanna stir all this together and that's pretty simple, but look at this beautiful mixture we're creating. You're gonna have the creaminess of different cheeses because we put in three total types of cheeses. We have the ricotta, we have Parmesan, and we have mozzarella and that's all gonna form together for this just umptious, beautiful filling and look how quickly that does come together. And it's, what I like about it is the little bit of lemon zest is gonna give a brightness, but even the color itself, it's just this bright, beautiful pop against that sauce we created too, to go underneath. But, ugh, super simple. And I think we so often forget how simple foods can be. We, over, we overanalyze them and we make it hard. So I want just a little bit of an assembly line here of sorts. So I'm gonna bring over my sauce quickly, because it had been simmering, it's all done, and look how beautiful it is. It's a really quick sauce that I actually use this for a lot of things. And then do you remember, I just put in that basil because I wanted to take it out. See how it's all limp? That's what it would look like if you had chopped it up in there. Well, I don't want that. That's why I'm taking it out. I'm gonna just set it aside. And that sauce has just been simmering and soaking in all those flavors. So now we're ready to really just bring everything together. That's the beautiful part. And so what we're gonna do is instead of mixing the sauce into that filling, which I do not wanna do, we're gonna put it right here into the bottom of this baking dish, which is a beautiful moment. Look at that sauce and how beautifully it's come together. And it's super simple. And I want a good dose of the sauce. Like, as you can see, I am putting it, like it's filling in that bottom. And that's what you want. You want the shells to just slightly cook and simmer the remaining time they're going to in the oven in this sauce. And that's the beautiful part. They're gonna all be just soaking in all these flavors. This is a great meal to me to do. You could have it ready in the morning. Like you could make this before leaving, maybe even for the day, have it sit in the fridge at, after we get it all assembled. And then you could come home, just put it in the oven. Mm, I'm, I'm ready for it. So now is the only tedious part of this recipe where you take a shell, you take some of the filling and you put it in the shell. Now, as you can see, this is not hard. This is not, rocket science, we're just gonna put it in and we're gonna start laying the shells right in that sauce where it just like nestles them and cradles them. So it's a not a bad process, it takes a few minutes, but don't worry, it's worth it. So I'm gonna keep putting this inside the shell, see how simple this is? And you know, stuff a decent dose in it, but the amount of shells you need, you can just evenly somewhat eyeball it. And if you need to, you could go back and add some, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. So we'll put them in, nestle them, keep going, and we'll, we'll put some cheese on top too. I just got the last shell put in. Now, I do always wanna make sure you know, when you're doing these shells, make sure to cook a few extra, and this is why. Some of them will come out looking like this, or they'll have rips in them that you don't wanna use. I mean, a rip here and there, like I did one with a rip, but if they're really mutilated, you can't really do it well. But look how that sauce comes up and starts cradling all of them, and then when we bake them, it will even more. So now the important part is some more cheese. Now, what I kinda like to do is put little pockets of cheese. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can just sprinkle it over the top. Or you can kind of go through and put these like pockets on. 
because what I like is kind of how then it melts over that shell a little bit. I don't know, there's something special about that. So what this cheese is gonna do though in the oven is it's really gonna start browning and coating and then it'll be all bubbly and that's when all these shells finish baking. They soak in some of that sauce. And so think of this meal we have now. We have this delicious bubbling sauce that has so much flavor. We also then have this mixture in the middle that has ricotta and Parmesan and all that beauty. So we're gonna put these in until they're bubbling, warmed throughout, ready to go. It's a good meal. So it has baked. I let it get golden on top. I actually just for a little bit the end turned the broiler on because I really wanted those to get just for like a couple minutes to get kind of nice and browned. It's a beautiful dish, right? It comes together pretty quickly and it's all homemade. We made the sauce, we made the filling. It really wasn't that, it was pain free. I can promise you that. And it's worth all the time, believe me. So at this point you can just serve it up, let it cool a little bit. What I love is look at that sauce that's underneath. It's like just thick enough that it, ugh, it cradles and some of it baked into it. Mm. I know, I'm probably overly excited about this because I am. This is to me like childhood. We only had these once in a while, but I feel like I definitely remember when we did. And it was one of my favorite days because they just seem special. They seem like a treat. And I think that's what food can be. It can be those special treats. But look at the inside of that. You get the beautiful filling. You get that ricotta mixture with the herbs and then that sauce. Smells good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's like a hug and a really delicious hug. <laughs> what I love is you get each component. So right away you get the sauce, which is a beautiful, it's kind of rich tomato sauce. But then that filling hits you and there's a little bit of brightness with that lemon, a little bit of herb notes with the parsley and the basil. And then there's almost creamy like cheese in the middle too. Obviously because we put multiple kinds of cheese in it. So the Parmesan kind of seasons it, the ricotta and the mozzarella are almost creamy and yet have tons of flavor. It's a delicious meal, a delicious dish. One that can be made on a weeknight, takes a couple more minutes maybe, but it's totally worth it and really isn't that extensive. But it's also one that you can share with others, whether it's a big family, friends coming over. It's a great meal. Forget trying to think of having a dinner party with tons and so many different menu items. Have a beautiful dish like this. Everyone's gonna be happy. Throw a salad with it. Everyone will remember that night and how good the food was. So share this recipe around so others can see how easy it is too. And check my website, wiseguy.com, so you can get the full recipe and any other recipe you need. They're all on there. Happy eating.